And now we thank you, Lord, as we share your word. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. First scripture we're going to have on the board. This is a teaching, so I try not to preach, but we want to teach. I want you to understand. I want you to comprehend that I'm depending upon the Holy Spirit to open your minds and your hearts and mine too, that we might understand what's going on in the world. I won't get very far tonight. I know that. I never do. But we're going to try. So I want you to look at verse, uh, uh, for, uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16. We're going to start there. And that will be up on the board. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16. All right, everybody, eyes on the board. Peter is talking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you, that is unto the body of Christ, the people of that day, unto us, notice this, made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Now when you read the Bible and you, if you understand, how many of you understand that? On the board? Mm -hmm. you, look at it now. You need to understand that. So what is Peter saying? We're not following fables. We're not following what somebody just came off the street and is preaching. We're telling you the truth. We're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to you. That is absolute truth. It came from the very heart of God. And he says, we were witnesses. Peter was witnesses. Now, at this point, I've always, you know, we got to either say, well, Peter, you're either the biggest liar in the world. Or you're telling the truth. I will say that again. Peter, you're either the biggest liar in the world or you're telling the truth. How many believes he's telling the truth? Let's see your hands. Yeah, I'll give you some exercise tonight. <laughs> Aren't you glad you don't have some heavy, you know, just lift you. How many, uh, try that. Everybody try that. Right arm. Up, up. Oh, God, y'all good. Ah, that's good. All right, so, so when you read the Bible, you've got, to see, you've got to make a decision. Now, either Peter's telling the truth or he's a liar. So we all said we believe the truth, so we've got to believe that. So listen, he, he was an eyewitness of, of Jesus Christ. He saw Jesus on the Mount of Olives. He saw Jesus. He knew Jesus personally. He saw Jesus ascend into heaven. He was there when Jesus was being crucified. So he's an eyewitness. So we're, we're listening to a man that's, that, that's written down the Word of God for us to understand that we're dealing with somebody that wrote this letter. It's just not somebody off the street or down the road, but somebody that's been with Jesus and is an eyewitness and seen His majesty. Woo! Somebody go, woo! That's powerful. We're talking to a man that's been there. I like that. Now look at the Word of the Lord. Look at verse as we move on. <laughs> Next verse, or the rest of that verse. For when we were invested with honor and for when he was invested with honor and glory, <coughs> excuse me, from God the Father, and a voice from was bored to him by the splendor, majesty, the glory, and the bright cloud that overshadowed him, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased and delight. Now, we know he's talking about Mount, the Mount Transfiguration, don't we? You've read your Bible. You know that. So who was up on the mountain? Peter, James, and John. And Jesus appeared. And who was the other person? Somebody tell me. Eli. Moses? Moses? All right, Moses. Everybody remember that. See, I don't know. I, how, many, how many's read the Bible? <laughs> Once, <laughs> twice. That's good. So you see that what he's doing? It. He's talking and saying, "Listen now. Remember, I said I'm an eyewitness. I saw Jesus Christ and Moses on the Mount of Transfiguration, and the and a voice from heaven. Whose voice was it? That was God the Father's voice. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Now." I tell people, no, wait a minute. You, 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 God don't lie. God's not a man to lie. Do you see that? And look what God said. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and delight. Now, you know, uh, there are groups that say, well, God didn't have no son. How many knows that? 
Hmm? Some groups, namely the Muslims. Let's see, God said he had a son and he's well pleased. The Muslims say that there is no, that God don't have no son. Which one do you think is telling the truth? Do you know? How many knows telling the truth? That's easy to figure out, isn't it? See, so we got to stamp that in our mind. We are dealing with absolute truth. God has spoken. God has said, this is my beloved son, I, who I am well pleased. And so that should instantiate us. And we know that God is not a man that he should lie. All right, let's go to the next verse. Now I got to move fast. I got... That, that really bothers me because of the time element. But anyway, I'm settling down. We actually heard this voice. Whose voice was it? God the Father. Man, this is a great witness. Peter, you have been there. You've heard the voice of God Almighty. You've seen Jesus up on the, on the Mount of Transfiguration. Why, you even saw Moses there. Oh, we could say a lot about this, but I just want to move on a little bit. Bored out of heaven. We were, we were together with him. We were, well, who's together with them? Peter, James, and John. Remember that? All right. With him on the holy mountain. Well, I'm pretty uh, satisfied that we've got a, a good witness. How many of you feel we've got a good witness here when we talk about Peter? See, you get those things nailed down. Somebody else comes and tells you something else. Who's lying? Not the man that's seen it. That's Peter. This is the word of God. So we nail it down and realize that we have witnesses that testify that Jesus is the Son of God. I love that. All right, look at the next scripture. Go. And we have, and we have the prophetic word made Firmer still, you will do well to pay close attention to it. Now, we're going to be talking about prophecy. See, I'm building my case for you. Now, he's established the fact about Jesus. He's established the fact that Peter was a witness. He, was, he established the fact in the Word of God that Peter uh, saw and heard the voice of God. So all that's settled. Now we, and now Peter is saying, for we have the, <clears throat> the prophetic word made firmer still. You will do well to pay close attention to it as to a lamp shining in a dismal, squalid, and dark place. Until the day breaks through, the gloom and the morning star rises, comes into being in your hearts. So what is, what is Peter saying to us? We better pay attention to prophetic the prophetic word of God. And in the word of God, we have the prophetic word because it shows us a lot. Next verse. Yet first you must understand this, church, that no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of any personal or private or special interpretation, in lucian or solving. Let's make sure we understand that. Yet first you must understand this, that no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of any personal or private, somebody just off the top of his head shooting out prophecy. No. Go to the next verse. For no prophecy ever originated because of some man willed it to do so. It Reverse. Something happened. For no prophecy ever originated because of some man willed it to do so. It never came by human impulse. All right, the very close. Well, but if it didn't come by human impulse, where did it come from? Good question. <laughs> but men spoke from God who were born along, moved, and, is, and impelled by the Holy Spirit. When somebody's writing and you have a pen, is that pen writing the words down? Is it the pen that writes the words down? Yeah, it writes the word down. But who causes it to write the words down? The person that has the pen in their hand. 
So the prophet was like a pen in the hand of God, and the pen wrote down what the Father made it write down. We see that? It didn't come from man. It didn't come from any, anybody, but it came from God. Now see, that we should ground our faith in that. It is God speaking. God is telling us something about the future. He's letting us know that prophecy is not some fable. It's not come from some man. But it, it come from a man that was impelled by the Holy Spirit to write down what God told him to write down. So we got that settled. See, that's anchor your soul in that. All right. That, that's the last verse there in it. So let's make sure we understand that. For no prophecy ever originated because of some man willed it to do so. It never came by human impulse. But men spoke from God who were born along, moved and impelled by the Holy Spirit. I love when God speaks. I lost my sunglasses uh, the other day, and in about three days I didn't have them, and I get out in the sun. I like my sunglasses on. Uh, of course, none of you are as old as I am. You're young, all of y'all are young folk, but the sun really hurts your eyes, you know, when you get a little older. And uh, so if I say, Holy Spirit, we've, I've looked everywhere. I, come, I went back there in my office. I come here. I looked everywhere and everything. Then I, find, I was over there in my, in my garage, and I walked out. I said, Lord, where are those sunglasses? In the woodshed. And I walked right in the woodshed. On the shelf, there was my glasses. I've had that experience so many times. Then I've had the time, where's my glasses? Look everywhere and they're on top of my head. <laughs> but see, God speaks. How many times I could give you stories of God speaking? This church is here because God spoke. We have this land because God spoke. I'm in the ministry because God spoke. On and on and on I could go. All right, now we've established, established something there. Now let's turn over and see what some prophecies got to say about some things in the future. Are you ready? Turn to Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2, I'll give you the verse just in a minute. Whoop. Here we go. The time element, i got to watch that. All right, I want to I start with uh, <clears throat> Daniel chapter 2, verse 19. Verse 19. Everybody there. Of course, this is the Amplified Bible. Then the secret was revealed to Daniel. Now, mo how many of you here know about Daniel? Daniel was uh, in, in Jerusalem, and Nebuchadnezzar's army came in and, and, and destroyed Jerusalem and, and the temple, and, and Daniel and, and many of his uh, people were led away in captivity to Babylon. You remember that? Okay. And Daniel was a young boy at this time, young man, probably about 16 years old. <laughs> and anyway, he rose up in the ranks of the king of Babylon. <coughs> and Daniel uh, is here, and he's speaking. And of course, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, and Daniel was able to interpret that dream, okay? And so, but what I want to do is just share this with you first before we get into the dream. Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a vision of the night, and Daniel blessed the God of heaven. He got happy. He blessed God. God showed him what this dream was all about, okay? Daniel answered, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. Verse 20. For, for wisdom and the might are his. All right, now you're 21. All right, 21. All right, we, okay, Daniel answered, blessed be the name of God forever and ever. He's just getting happy, isn't he? He's just blessing God uh, for wisdom and might are his. That is God's. He's blessing God. How many ever just do that? Blessed pray, praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. How many do that? Ah, I'm glad to see that. If you're not doing that, get with it. Learn a little step. Get happy in the Lord. Happy is the man whose transgressions and sins have been forgiven. 
envious is the man whose sins and transgressions have been removed from him. Did you like those songs that Linda picked out? What sin? How many of the night are clear from all sin? How did you get clean by the blood of the Lamb? Clean. No sin. Hallelujah. That's awesome. What a salvation we have. How many believe it? All right, some of you are rocking. Oh, well, we're here to help you. You stay around us long enough, you're going to find out that God has made you holy, made you righteous by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Well, my, my, what happened to my new sin? Oh, thank God. God prepared uh, us for that, too. He made provisions for us. And somebody said about 1 John what? No. 9. Say, everybody say 1 John 1, 9. And what does 1 John 1, 9 say? If thy will confess thy sins, God is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And if you've been cleansed from all unrighteousness, what unrighteousness do you have? None. None. Give me five. Ah, no, no, man, she's getting it. I tell you that right now. Mm. I like to hear a little amens out there. That fires me up. That's like putting another piece of wood on my spirit. All right, church, behave yourself. All right, look, he changes the times and the seasons. Mm -mm, God does. We read the Bible that the Antichrist does that too. But he ain't authorized to do that. But God is. He's sovereign. He can do that. Notice that. He changes the times and the seasons. It's a lot that I can say about that, but I don't have time. He removes kings and preachers. Any other leaders that ain't doing what they're supposed to do when they're supposed to do it. It sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. Next verse. Now we're getting a little glimpse of God's character and what he does. He reveals the deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and, and, and the light dwells with him. So God knows everything. He knows all the secrets. And what I want you to see there... Daniel says that because we're going to see the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar. We're going to see the kingdom of the Persians, the kingdom of uh, Alexander the Great. Many of you probably have read about him in history. And then the Roman Empire, the tribulation years, and then the last kingdom, which is the kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ coming on the earth within that period of time from, from, from uh, Nebuchadnezzar to the millennium. And that's what you got in your hands there when you read that out. All right, we're slowly getting there. <sighs> what verse was that? That was verse 22. All right, that was the last verse. Okay, now, turn over, right, jump right over to the page there to uh, Daniel chapter 2, verse 36. Okay? Now we're going to get started. Now, Nebuchadnezzar has this dream. How, how many uh, are familiar with that? He had a dream. How many ever had a dream? I have dreams. <laughs> they ain't very good. <laughs> Bad dreams. Stupid dreams. How many have ever had these stupid dreams? Yeah, that's all right. Just, we know where that comes from, the devil. <laughs> Trying to mess you when you're sleeping, see. All right, now, this was the dream, and we will tell the interpretation of it to the king. Now, if we had time, I'd go back to the, uh, 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 Daniel 2, starting with verse 1, and work all the way up to this point. But I'm just moving right into the interpretation of it. How many understand that? All right. When you read Scripture, Scripture interprets Scripture. Remember that. Everybody say, Scripture interprets Scripture. So when you read something about prophecy, you say, what in the world is that? Just keep reading, and the Scriptures will interpret it for you. I can show you many places in the Scriptures how true that is. But this is what it says now. So now, Daniel is telling the dream... Because God gave him, Daniel, 
the dream that Nebuchadnezzar dreamt. All right, here we go. We got the picture? All right. You, O king, are the king of kings earth to whom the God of heaven has given the kingdom, the power and might and glory. Now, when you go in, you read about Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of this and everything, he begins to find out that, who God is God. And he moves along pretty good. Then he backslides. And Dan just gives him a warning to say, uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, now you said God was the God of everything, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A year goes by and Nebuchadnezzar is in his palace and he's looking out at his kingdom and all the glory that, 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 that is there. And he says, boy, I did that. Whew. What came in? Pride. How many of you, he ate grass for seven years? Turned into a beast. That's why I walk humble. My name is Bob Humble Tilton. <laughs> I don't like grass. <laughs> when I was a kid, I didn't like college. <laughs> God loves us and he will correct us because he loves us. All right, let's go to the next verse now. Let's build this case for you. I want to build it for you now. And wherever the children of men dwell and the beasts of the field and the birds of the heavens, he has given them into your hands, Nebuchadnezzar, and has made you to rule over them all. Now, in that verse, tell me how Nebuchadnezzar got the kingdom. God gave it to him. Have you got anything? God gave it to you. Hello? It ain't your home. It's God's home. He gave it to you. You know that nice car you drive? I know I see Alice and Rick, they're driving a nice car. Remember, God gave it to you. You're just using it, that's all. But aren't you glad he lets you use it? Yes. See, if we, if we understand that, man, God did it. God saved me. Before the foundation of the world, God called me to be his child. God saved me. God prepared salvation for me. It's nothing I can do to work for it. I don't have to climb up a thousand steps to try to please God. I don't have to try to do this to please God. That, to do, that, is, to gain, that is to gain my salvation. But there are things that I want to do because I want to please him. I desire to please him. I desire to please my wife, Susan. A lot of times she asks me to do things, you know, I used to like, I don't want to, how many's ever just mumbled a little bit, just a little bit, wasn't much, you know, just a little bit. Yeah, but God heard it. <laughs> yeah, God heard it. <laughs> take out the, would you take the trash out for me? Yeah. I'm taking out the trash. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. I gotta, you know, I gotta look at this news, see what's going on. But I'm obedient now. Susan will take it out of the trash can in the bag, you know, and put it at the door sometimes. Because I'm gonna go out, cut the grass, and I see the trash. Whoops! Pick it up, take it out, put it in the trash can, go out and cut grass. How many does that? She don't tell me, her take the trash out! She just takes it and puts it, and puts it right in. And I just pick it up. And, peace, peace. Don't do anything to disturb the peace. All right, Bob, behave yourself. I'm just trying to wake you up a little bit. <clears throat> All right, where we at? Oh, man, that's good. And wherever the children of men dwell and the beasts of the field. All right, God's given to King Nebuchadnezzar, made you ruler over them. Oh, you king of Babylon are the head of of gold. Now look at your little picture there. You see that statue? See that statue? One of them's laying down, the other one's... All right, that's a picture. All right, that statue, that is a statue that was in the dream. That's the dream. And so Daniel is interpreting it to the king and say, King, you're the head there, the gold. Okay. Now, I want to stop right here from the top of that head, his head, 
all the way down. This is a time area. This is a time area that, that all the way down, and you go all the way to the foot, the feet, and you go all the way down to the tribulation years, to the uh, kingdom of, of, of Christ coming onto earth. That's what that time element is there. That statue, when you lay it down like that, the other uh, pamphlet you have will show you a time element. You see that time element? From the, from the, from actually from the time that uh, they went into captivity, 606 on this right here, on 606, and then right on down, this is the time of the Gentiles. This is the time of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles. How many of you heard that phase, the time of the Gentiles, okay? So what you have there is all these different kingdoms. Each part of this statue represents a kingdom, okay? All right, let's move on and, we, and this will unfold for you. All right, look at verse 38. <clears throat> we already said 38? All right, 38. All right, we said 38. Go back to 39, I'm sorry. Thirty-eight, thirty-nine, and after you shall, and after you, and after you shall arise, and, and after you shall arise another kingdom. All right, now you've read the Bible. How many knows that Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar? was the kingdom during the time of the Jews. And his army came in, and God used Nebuchadnezzar to come in and to destroy the temple and take the Jewish people captive. How many knows that? All right. So we're painting a picture here as we make step by step in a timeline showing us all the way until the Antichrist and then the millennium years that Christ will rule on earth. How many sees that picture? Very simple, not complicated. Okay, look, everybody look at me. Nebuchadnezzar, and we're gonna talk about these kingdoms all the way down till you get all the way down to Jesus Christ of millennium years. That's what, that's what that statue, when you lay that statue down, each one. Now we, we're at this point, can look back in history and see it all. So many of the prophecies which he's prophesying here has come to pass. You need to see that. Okay? Everybody need to see that. How many sees that? All right. Right here, Daniel's talking. But all of that, that Daniel's, how many know Daniel's in heaven? <laughs> so we're, we're, we're actually winding the tape back all the way from right here close to the, uh, the tribulation years and the second and the rapture, second coming of Christ in the millennium. We're right here, and now we're walking back, we're rewinding the tape all the way back, hundreds of years, past the cross, we go all the way to Babylon and King Nebuchadnezzar. Then we're gonna turn, and then we see his kingdom, and God gave it to him, then we're going to see another kingdom come in. So we're coming this way. Then we're going to see another kingdom. The, the next kingdom will be Persia. Then the next kingdom will be uh, Alexander the Great, the Greeks. Everybody see that? Then what is the next kingdom? Roman, Rome. Rome went all the way to, was in power when Jesus was crucified. How many know that? And they went on. It was the kingdom about 300 and some years after uh, the crucifixion. So you see the picture. Now there's a space like the church, the period of grace that fools everybody. But that comes out later on when Paul comes on the scene and God gives him this revelation of the body of Christ and this period of 2,000 years of grace. And then the tribulation years will start. But when you read the Bible, 
How many of you know they preach the kingdom is near? If you read your Bible, you'll see that the kingdom is near, the kingdom is near. The ki but see, God changes times and seasons. So he stretched it out now for 2,000 years of grace that people would be saved. The church age, which was a mystery, and there's 11 mysteries in the, in the New Testament, I think it is, that nobody knew uh, until later on. So, so Revelation came a little here, a little here, down through the years. Revelation came. It was written down in the Bible. It came from next generation, the next generation. People, people back there don't, didn't know what we know. We can look back and see it now. Now, the point I want to make, up is, make out is, if all of the prophecies way back here, even, even at Adam and Eve, but we're just coming here, right here in Babylon, if all of these prophecies have come about, and it's in the history books, everybody follow me? And here we are right now, what other prophecies do we have in the near future? If all of them have come true, which I don't doubt, that gives me faith to believe whatever is yet to come, I believe it. Am I, am, if I lost, how many have I lost? See, I'm building something. I build them. You understand what I'm saying? Good. I like people to understand what I'm saying. All right, now, let's, let's fo follow the scriptures there. I see I've lost my place. All right, here we go. Verse, uh, all right, verse 39. And after you, after you, now who's you? Nebuchadnezzar, follow me now shall arise another kingdom. And what is this next kingdom that's coming, coming into place? Persia. The Medes and the Persians. All right. If we had time, we could just, oh, we, I need hours to be able to explain. I'm doing, I'm doing the best I can to build this p a picture for you. So, and after you, now Daniel is talking, after you, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, you shall, uh, uh, there shall rise another kingdom, the Medes and the Persians, inferior to you, and still a th third kingdom of bronze, which is Greece, all right? One kingdom. How many of you? It was many years in those kingdoms. Many years in the kingdoms of Persia. Many years in uh, Greece kingdom. Follow me? So you, you, read a, you read that verse. You got, you got hundreds of years in that verse right there. How many see that? All of the time of, of Babylon... All the time of uh, the Persians. And then Alexander the Great, the Greek, he was 33 years old when he, when he died. He was a marvelous military man. And, and if I had time, we could talk about some of his battles and how he went into, even into India and, and fought and captured land even in India. So he was really a go-getter. So, then we have Alexander the Great, which shall bear rule over all the earth. All right. Now, <laughs> excuse me. When you see earth in the Bible, now you've got to picture yourself over there at that time. All right. Everybody ready to fly? Let's just fly over back to that time. So we fly back here to Alexander, and we're watching Alexander capture one kingdom, all these kingdoms, and he's capturing the whole earth but he didn't capture America. He didn't capture Canada. He didn't capture South America. So when you see the earth back there, the known earth. Very important to understand that, okay? So he captured the known earth at that time around the Mediterranean. How many of you know everything happening over there right now is around, around the Mediterranean Sea? Israel, Lebanon. Iraq, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Egypt. It's all over there, but it affects the whole world. So when the Antichrist comes, he'll be over there doing his thing. And we ain't got time right now. I wish we did. I, I could, we could go for hours here. But we're over here. But it will affect the whole world because the whole world is now coming into a one <clears throat> excuse me, a one world 
government, when the Antichrist comes uh, into power, economy is all connected together. So what happens over there affects our account economy. How many see that? You know what I mean? All right. So you need to see that. So a lot of it, we're going to see. That's why we watch the Middle East all the time. Okay. All right. Let's move on real quick. Like, what's our next verse? All right. And the fourth kingdom. All right. How many kingdoms? The fourth kingdom. Now we're down to the Rome, Roman time. Remember the Rome, Romans? They always did a lot of Roman, didn't they? They roamed around. All right. They captured all of that area over there. And, 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 and how many know they were in power when Jesus Christ? So when were they in power? Now we can see the cross. We can see the Roman uh, kingdom. And that's when Jesus came to the earth doing that kingdom. All right. And of course, they crucified him. And then, of course, his kingdom went on to about 300 after Christ. A.D. All right, so look, the fourth kingdom, Rome, shall be strong as iron. Since iron breaks to pieces and seduces all things. So Rome is a vicious kingdom, a vicious army. They crushed, they killed, they slaughtered, they crucified. They were like a beast. And iron which crushed, it shall break and crush all these. All right, go to the next now verse. And as you saw the feet and toes, now do you see that image? Look at the image there. See, we're talking about this image right here. The head is what? Somebody tell me what the head is. What kingdom is the head? All right, Babylon. The rest part, what is the next? That other, they'll tell you. The next? Greece. Greece. Right on down, and then Rome. All right. And then it was split into two kingdoms. The Western and the, and the, uh, the Western Division, the Eastern Division, and down to the toes. All right. So you see the picture with that? Uh, image represents represents kingdoms kingdoms each part of that image represents certain periods of time of these kingdoms okay all right how many understand so far what we're saying good I'm not losing you I don't want to lose you all right let's go to the uh, next verse now and as you saw the iron mixed with mari, muri and earthly clay, so they shall mingle themselves. Notice this. Now this really has given me some uh, time to think. But uh, themselves in the seed of men in marriage bonds. But they will not hold together for two such elements or I. Uh, hallelujah, help me there. I, yeah, that's right. I'm glad you know it. Can never harmonize, even as iron does not mingle itself with clay. Now, there's some secret revelation in there. I want to stay out of trouble if I can. <laughs> you know, you get in trouble preaching. <laughs> How many know that uh, one of the reasons that God had to destroy the people of the earth? You know, one of the reasons? Angels came down and had sexual intercourses with women, and a new type of race came forth. Half human and half demonic. How many knew that? Very good. You know it now. Some of you know it now. Just put it on your back shelf. Okay. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the day of the coming of the Lord. And if you see what is happening to our world today, I am not a mean man. And I know there's reasons that you have to have divorce. I understand a lot of divorces are just plain selfishness. A lot of them 
It had to be. And I understand that. How many know I understand that? Okay, I've been around a long time, 82 years old. Remember that. So I've been around a long time. But there's something going on that the devil is doing to make women just totally independent of man. And the devil's looking. Do you know why in the Bible it talks about a woman wearing a hat or a scarf? You know why that's important? To show that they are under authority. Because, see, there are watchers out there called watchers. These are fallen angels. And when they see a woman not under authority, they can come down and, and do some things that will amaze some of you. We were dealing with one woman that years ago says it to me, she's very lonely. So this other woman said, listen, you ought to do what I do. Well, what do you do? I draw, just draw a circle and get in there, the circle, and just ask Jesus to come down and just love up on you. Well, she'd done that. And this spirit came down and began to love up on her. Now, that's blowing some of your mind, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. That's what happened before the flood. Read that. Genesis 19 tells you that. Okay? I'm not telling you nothing that's not in the Bible. But I'm saying that, that there is a, do, a demonic power in this world. He's the God of this world. You know who the God of this world is right now? Satan. So you got to remember, we fight not against flesh and blood, but against evil powers, evil spirits. We fight, we wrestle. And, 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 and some of the things that you don't understand, you, don't, you better learn how to do spiritual warfare. Learn how to do spiritual warfare. You see the devil sucking your husband away. You see the, uh, the devil sucking your uh, uh, wife away or your kids away. That's the demonic powers working. Now, I'm rubbing a sore spot in me because I get, mm, because I love people. How many understands my heart? I cry and weep for the souls of men. Well, anyway, we'll throw that out. Just put it to one side until God can show you the full story. All right. Now we're talking about it don't mix. Darkness and light don't mix. If you're a young Christian woman and this man comes in your life and he's not a Christian, it ain't going to mix. Light can have no fellowship with darkness. Period. I know this man over here, this missionary could tell you stories that probably curl your hair. What's happening in India, all the different gods that they have, all kids laying out in the, in, in, in the street dead. Horrible things. And for us to complain, go ahead and slap yourself. Or let me slap you. <laughs> Isn't that true? But I think about what's happening over there in other parts of the world. And this man can tell you. Rick can tell you. He's a missionary to India. And I study this stuff out. It's horrible. But listen. <clears throat> That's why Jesus is our only hope. There is protection in Jesus. He will protect us as we follow him. But a lot of people will come out from under his covering and get into trouble. That's why Susan is so happy. She's under my covering. And I know if I don't treat her right, God will not answer my prayers. And I need my prayers answered. And if I don't get my prayers answered... I might as well not even be your shepherd. Who wants a shepherd that can't get their prayers answered? Anybody out there yet? Let me see you. <laughs> How many love me just a little bit? If I keep preaching, I don't know. <laughs> just telling the truth. Okay. Ah, oh, the time element. Time element. Let's move fast. All right, where are we at? All right, let's go to the next verse. Which is... <laughs> 44. All right, I'm going to move fast. Got 10 minutes. And in, in the day of these final 10 kings, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> am I in the right spot here? 
44, okay. Yeah, in the days of these final 10 kings. Now we're talking about 10 kid, kings coming along here. Set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Hmm. Let's read that again. And in the days of these final 10 kings, in other words, there'll be a final 10 kings that'll be on the earth at that time. Shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom? Now, how many of you know we're all the way down to the millennium? We're all the way down to the kingdom of Jesus. And God's going to set up that kingdom which shall never be destroyed, nor shall its sovereignty be left to another people, but it shall break and crush and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall, they, and, and it shall stand forever. Now, I want you to see that in that verse, you don't see Jesus, do you? Read that, that, that verse. Read that. We see God, the Father. He's going to set up the kingdom. It's the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How many of you know a verse can say things that's not, that, that's not printed in the verse? Everybody look at that. What kingdom is going to destroy all those other kingdoms? Tell me. Jesus' kingdom. Jesus' kingdom. Okay, yeah. Jesus' kingdom. Everybody see that? How many of you know we're in that kingdom? How many of you know we're a kingdom of priests? We shall reign and rule with him. Now look, you see how many kingdoms we've come down to the line here. Now between... When you see the Roman kingdom, I want you to see this picture. When you see the Roman kingdom, there's what you call a revised Roman empire. Or you could say it's like, well, it goes down to the toes of that, stat of that statue. That the Antichrist comes with those, those kingdoms, but the kingdom that's coming and they're going to destroy that kingdom, but it's going to destroy all those other kingdoms, all of the culture, all of the economic things of those, all those nations, all of that uh, demonic stuff that they've done in all those kingdoms, all that's going to be destroyed when Jesus Christ comes back and sets up his kingdom. And certain nations will be judged and be no more. But those nations that have protected and, and supported Israel will stay in place. But I don't have time to go into all of that. Now I want you to see that, how many see that the different kingdoms? So let's see what we can do with the kingdoms. First kingdom that we were talking about is what? Babylon. Second kingdom? Persia. Third kingdom? The Greek kingdom. The fourth kingdom? All right, now there's four, but the fourth kingdom has a branch. I like to think of it a branch or an arm going out. That's another way you could explain it. That brings in the Antichrist kingdom during the tribulation years. But it's destroyed along with the other kingdoms when Christ appears. And how many of you know he's going to land on Mount Olive? And it's going to split. And during that period of time there'll be war like you've never seen it. When the Antichrist comes into power, into, uh, to the point where he is labeled as the Antichrist, because the first three and a half, he'll come as peace. He'll make peace over there. Israel will buy the covenant. There'll be a seven years covenant. But in, in the three and a half years, in the middle of that, is what we call Jacob's trouble. How many has ever heard Jacob's trouble? It'd be three and a half years of great trouble for the Israelites. The, the Antichrist army will go after the Jews to try to kill every one of them like Hitler did. So you see history repeating itself during the Antichrist kingdom. He will, he will demand that every human being on the planet Earth take a mark on their head and their, on their right hand. And if you don't take his mark, you will not be able to buy food, gas, get a job or anything. You say, well, Bob, you're not. not. Well, listen, how many, how many has got a uh, social security card? 
Huh? Can you get a job without a Social Security card? Huh? We see the system in operation right now. It's in operation right now. How many's got a number to your credit card? There's a number to it, right? What, what is that, num your number? What? <laughs> Gotcha! Gotcha! A <laughs> little sense of humor helps, you know. <laughs> see, you need to see what's going on in the world right now. We just take it all for granted. But if you don't know these things that I'm teaching, we'll just be sucked right into it. We better pay more close attention to these prophecies. That's what Peter said. Remember what Peter said? All right, we've got to move fast now, okay? All right, here we go. So that kingdom will stand forever. And, who, and, and what's that last kingdom? Jesus' kingdom. He'll be on earth. He'll be in Israel. He'll be in Jerusalem. He will sit there right where King David sat. And King David will be set right by him. And he will rule the world from there. And we will help him uh, to do, carry that out all over this world. You and me. Some of you will probably be school teachers. You'll be, nothing wrong with working at Hardee's. I'll see you at Hardee's even, you know. Um, uh, you know, <laughs> it depends on what you've done down here. It, is, it will depend on what job he can give you in his kingdom. You know, you know if, if somebody's lazy and, you know, just sits back and let everybody do everything. Well, you might get to heaven if you put your faith in trust, but you'll be wearing a, a miniskirt. <laughs> Some of you'll have long crown, long uh, flowing gowns because you've done a lot for the Lord. How many of you know we'll be rewarded according uh, uh, by our works? We're not saved by our works. But I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll show you my faith by my works. That's what James said. They shall know you by your love. You shall know that we are his disciples by our love. All right, we've got to move fast. Got four minutes. Oh, Jesus. Next verse. Quick, let's move it. 48. All right, here we go. Just as you saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain. Who's the stone there? That's Jesus. Jesus. Standing on the stone that cannot be moved saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands. Wow! And that it broke in pieces the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold. Remember the gold? The head, Nebuchadnezzar, the gold. The head was the gold. The great God has made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. The dream is certain and the interpretation uh, of it is sure. Now, we, now, all of a sudden, he goes all the way back to King Nebuchadnezzar and says, Now, King Nebuchadnezzar, 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 or whatever, uh, <clears throat> God has shown you. <laughs> God has shown you. And through this, he's showing us. Have you seen the picture? All right, now we're just covering a little bit. <laughs> Stick around, it gets heavy. I mean, it gets better. All right, what's the next verse? Is that it? No, we got more verses. 46, all right, here we go. All right, and the king answered, Daniel, of a truth, your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and the revealer of secret mysteries, seeing that you could reveal this secret mystery. Next verse. Then the king made Daniel great and gave him many great gifts. And he made him to rule over the whole providence of Babylon and to be chief governor over all the wise men of Babylon. Next verse. It sounds like Joseph getting promoted, doesn't it? And Daniel requested of the king and he appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and the shield of faith over the affairs of the providence of Babylon. <laughs> But Daniel remained in the gate of the king at the king's court. And what's the next verse? That's it. That's it. Any questions? Now you can't grasp it all. I understand that. I've been studying this for 50 some years. <laughs> but it's so clear to me. 
but I try to break it down where you get certain, you get certain points, you, you, you see, okay? Now, we didn't go back to Adam and Eve. We went back to where Babylon, where Daniel was in Babylon, and then, and then the, the period of time all the way down here. And we need to talk about this 2,000 years of grace of the church years. Uh, we don't see that in the Old Testament, I mean, the New Testament or the Old Testament. Now, you see, in what we've covered here, you don't see nothing about the rapture because it has not been revealed yet. It was revealed to the Apostle Paul in Paul's time. And Thessalonians and, and 1 Corinthians 15 tells us that. So there's a lot of things that, that later on that comes down the pipeline, so to speak, put in, and puts it in place, and we can fill in this area that we don't seem like that happened so quick. Now, I really got you confused, ain't it? That's <laughs> wonderful. I like to see people get it. Rick, you getting this? Good. Yeah, well, just... Now study those charts, and, and we'll talk about it again next time. Any questions? No questions. All right. Where do you think we are on the timeline? 